In this video, we'll break down the first 12 bars of this open G slide solo, and I'll show you some tips and tricks along the way. My BGI members have access to a slow tutorial video of this entire composition, along with downloadable tab files and access to the interactive Sound Slice tab player. It's a really cool feature. And if you're already a member, just look for Lesson 371. And if you're not a member, you can find out how to join the fun at the link in the description. Now, on to the lesson. So this is in open G tuning, which is Tune D, G, D, G, B, and then D. And we're going to kick this off with a classic blues turnaround sound. And this is going to come up later in the progression as an actual turnaround. Here we're using it as an intro. So we're starting out with that open fifth string. And then what I'm going to do is use my index finger to just kind of brush up through the top two strings. And then we start this little walk down on the fourth string, starting with the F here on the third fret fourth string, and then down, and then down, and down again to the open fourth string. Each time we're working that little brush up in between, so we get this. All right, and here we start a cool little slide leg. So we hit the open fifth string first, and then we're gonna slide back from three to two and then all the way up to seven and that's on the fourth string and you might have heard it just there I snuck in a little note on the fifth string which to me just adds a little thump to it which is which is nice so I'm sliding back and then as I'm in motion I'm gonna hit that fifth string and you'll just kind of hear it kind of bringing the uh, the note along with the slide for reaching the seventh fret on the fourth string. All right, and that's basically it. The only other thing we're going to do for this little uh, intro turnaround is slide off and then back down. So we're sliding off from that, from that A note, the seventh fret of the fourth string, and then coming up, sliding up on the fifth string from the second fret toward the third fret, just to kind of set us up for the, for the groove. Right, that's where we're going. That you know, sharp strike on the bass notes. That's that's going to set us up uh, for the next piece here. But let's review this. Make sure we got it down. Over these first few bars of the main progression, we're going to set up some call and response licks around the twelfth fret, top couple of strings. We're also going to use the tenth fret some. All right, but the cool thing is how we start this out is where we ended that turnaround. Remember that you know, we kind of punch this open fifth string to kind of uh, put a statement, put a period on the end of the turnaround. It's actually beat one of the main, um, the main progression here. So that's where we're starting right here with this. And what I'm doing is pushing through strings five and four and just choking down. I want a pretty heavy attack on it, but I want to choke them out. I don't want this ringing. What I want to do is kind of clamp out that bass sound and then 
move all the way up to the 12th fret. And that's gonna happen right on the end of one, and then we're gonna play this lick. All right, so all on the top couple of strings here, strings two and string one. So I'm sliding into the 12th fret, then back down to the 10th fret before going to the 12th fret on the second string, then 10, 12, 12. All right, but then after we get through with that lick, we gotta end this measure and we're gonna set, us, set ourselves up for another one of those big moments in the bass. So we're going all the way down to the third fret on strings uh, five and four, slide into it. Really cool bluesy thing to do with the slide and then punch it just like we did before. So here's what we have for this part, this, this first measure. We, I'm gonna take you into it. All right, and that movement from all the way up here to this can be rather quick. You're covering a lot of space on the fretboard. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with dragging off of that 12th fret to help you get there. All right, so it's fine if they're a little connected as you get used to making that really large jump on the neck. For the next measure, we kind of start with that same idea, that slide kind of building some tension right at the end of the previous measure, and then we punch the bass just like we did before, and we're going back up top here to the 12th fret. The lick is slightly different, and if the first phrase was a call, this is a response, but it kind of hangs at the end, so it's kind of a response that still wants to go somewhere. Let's, let's see if you can get what I mean there. So, all right, see how we've got a lot hanging. So what's happening there is just 12th fret, first string, and then drag back down toward the 10th, and then real quick, punch that second string. I happen to be using my thumb to do that because I've got everything else muted out. It's a little tip to keep things from getting too crazy and loud. A lot of noises can come out of this resonator. But I'm plucking that second string and sliding toward the 12th fret before stopping it. Notice that my thumb pick went right back to the top of the second string to stop it. And then I plucked with my index finger in this case, the 12th fret on the first string. And I let that hang, that gets a full quarter note in time. So that's beat three. And for beat four, we're going to, with that hanging, we're gonna just drag off and do that move. And of course, the bass is the top of the next measure. So let's hear these first couple of licks and how they fit together. All right, so bar three starts just where we did before with that bass punch, and then we're pretty much gonna copy the lick from bar one. The only difference is here, instead of coming down here for that last moment of the measure, we're gonna stay up here and hit that 12th fret first string. And the reason is we wanna carry this statement, this phrase over into the next measure. So that's one fluid phrase, not just this kind of broken call and response that we've got going so far. Here we're going to kind of bring it home a little bit. All right, and there's the last phrase, uh, most of it anyway. So let's take a look at that. This is the last measure, and right on the beat, we're sliding very quickly. Again, with that same technique, I've got my thumb pick resting on the second string and therefore this part of my thumb laying across all the other strings, the lower strings. That's three, two, or three, four, five, and six rather. So nothing else is sounding. I want this to be really clean and clear. So I'm sliding back and then come back up to the 12th fret second string and then back to the 10th fret with a little triplet move. All right, something that I do a lot in my slide playing sounds very bluesy. And then back on the 12th fret second string before two slides on the third string. And the only thing we do to finish out this measure is we slide off from the 12th fret and into the fifth fret 
on the fourth string. And that's because we're getting ready for a chord change. It's going to be right here at the fifth fret. So we get into bar five, which is a chord change. We're going to change from the chord G to C here. We're going to work around this fifth fret, very important spot for our four chord. But we get there, remember, from the last beat of the previous measure with this move. But when we get to this fifth fret on that slide up on the fourth string, hit the third string fifth fret for the very next beat. That's the bar change. That's where we want to feel that chord change. So we're going to play a C, which is the chord, in fact, that we're moving to. All right. From here, we let that hang for a quarter beat. And then what we're going to do is a little triplet. All right. We're sliding back. So one, two triplet. Sliding back on the second string, down to the third fret, then back up toward the fifth, but on the third string. And your slide, you need to have contact the whole time. All right. Then what we're going to do is back down on the second string, fourth fret up to the fifth with the slide, and then back to our C note on the third string. And the very last thing we're going to do on this measure is come down and kind of slide up from this third fret on the fourth string and we're targeting that C note again but here we're gonna play a little bit more of a of a lick but it's right on the beat and it's a really cool way to kind of build some tension before changing the chords back to G that's coming so what we're gonna do is play that C then down to the B flat and open and all of those are happening right on the count so one two then we do this little lick. We play the open, fourth string, slide up to the third fret, same string, and then brush up through strings three and four. So we've got this. And you can tell where we're going, right? We want to change back to G, and we're going to punch those bass strings just like before. And we're going to move into some licks that sound similar, but there's a little bit more of a different, uh, a little bit more intensity, I should say, here with these. We're going to hit the bass, slide in to the 12th fret, top two strings. Catch both of them if you can, but really aim for that top one. Sounds really cool when you do both of them though, right? So we're going to do that and then slide back down with that little triplet. So that's 12 to 10 on the, whoop, on the first string and then back up to 12 on the second string. That's the triplet. And then what we're going to do is slide from 10 to 12. So that's more of a pronounced slide. And then we're going to end this with uh, two eighth notes. So beat four, we're going to slide into 12, but we're just going to like kind of edge into it there, right? We're, we're not doing a bigger slide occurring over an entire beat. We just want to do a smaller slide into that note. All right, and then we launch into um, this last lick over the G part, which is sliding down with one of those triplets, right? So it's a quick slide down from 12 to 10, back to 12 on the second string, and then back to 10 on the first string. A lot happening in a short amount of time here. All right, but we've done that before. And then back from 12 to 10 on the second string this time. This is where it gets a little bit different. And we're just really kind of targeting this G note on the third string. So that's what we're gonna do when we, when we finish that slide with a little triplet rhythm. Kind of like what we've done before, but here the notes are different. So 12 to 10 to 12, but just on strings two and three. And then we're simply going to pick out the rest of this measure. And after the... After we wrap up, we're changing chords here. This time up to the seventh fret. So let's listen to this put together. This next measure is where we change chords 
and visit the five chord D for the first time. And we're going to get there very similar to how we got to the C chord. And then our licks are really going to call back to what we did over C. So we're going to get there by sliding off and then back up into the seventh fret, just like we did before over C just now over D. And the rest of this measure mirrors what we did over C. We're gonna slide back on the second string from seven down to five, then back up to seven on the third string with a triplet rhythm, then sneak down just one fret to the sixth, to the seventh, that's a slide up. We're coming back to that D note, the seventh fret, and then, then we're gonna go back to that fifth fret and kind of push it up, all right? as we're getting ready to uh, play our final lick here. Which we've already done. And then from here, it's the turnaround. So why don't we play these last four measures together so you can see, or rather here, or both, how they fit together. And at the end, I just attached that same turnaround that we learned as the intro so that we have ourselves a complete 12 bar blues. Remember, if you'd like to learn more, you can become a member and you'll get more open G licks and a slow tutorial of this composition. And members also get tons, a library full of in-depth step-by-step courses to help you play better blues. Just click the link in the description to learn how to become a member and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, practice smart and play on.